and welcome to this tutorial. I'm Tess and I'm gonna walk you through how to make this adorable little wall hanging that is the Wally Fox, the latest member of the Wally Corn family. Last time I showed you the unicorn take on it, the Wally Corn original, and today we will be doing the fox. So to do this you need a few little things, so let's get going and see what they are. To make the Wally Fox just like this, you will need five shades of Drops Muscat. We have an orange for the body, a white for the center, a pink for the inner ear details, and two kinds of yellow for the leaves up here. And then I chose to shoot, do a smaller sized yarn. So this is Must Haves by Yarn and Colors in three different shades, and all the colors will be listed down here below. You will also need a darning needle to sew in the ends, a scissor to cut it off with. <laughs> you will also need a stitch marker for some of the rounds where we work in the rounds and also two sorts of hooks or sizes of hooks. You need a four millimeter for the drops musket and a three millimeter for the yarn and colors must-haves. That is the smaller size just so you can make these little berries tiny and cute and oh so luscious. So these are very very stiff and I want them so so they don't lose the shape over time okay. So this makes works probably with almost any kind of yarn but explore with what you have at home, try out different colors and just have fun with it. You might want to do blueberries and green leaves, I don't know. <laughs> just be inventive with it and have fun and I'll be happy, I promise. So let's begin! So to begin the body of the fox, we start with a slip knot on our hook in our color A yarn, which is the main body color, and then we simply chain 45 plus 1 stitches, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 43, 44, 45, and 46. Okay, so that last little one is our turning chain. So for row number one, we are simply going to go into each of every stitch that we just made in our lovely little chain. <laughs> and we are doing one single crochet all the way across, okay? So you are just simply building the base for the rest of your piece, which is exactly the same. But instead of in the chains, we are working in the stitches for the coming rows. So. Just keep on doing this until you reach the end of your chains. You will have, as I said, 45 single crochets across. And then you simply chain one, turn your work, and just go one more row with single crochets, and then a third, and then a fourth. So in the end, you will have four lines that with single crochets all the way, okay? So do that and meet me up for row number five. So I'm on my final stitches here for row number four and I've gotten this, let me just finish it, there we go, <laughs> and I'm just chaining one. Um, we got this very long, let's see if I can zoom out, very long little row of gorgeous gorgeous orange stitches and so this will measure approximately if you're using the same hook yarn and tension <laughs> of course it will measure 25 by two and a half centimeters okay so what you will do now is simply cut off the yarn and then gently pull out your tail and then we are going to begin round number five so we are now about to join our two sides to get the shape of this base, as you can tell from the back. And what you will do is simply take your piece, having the right side facing you. You can either decide that by just double checking that your starting end is to the right and your working end is to the left. Or just check your stitches. If your heads are tilting towards you, that you are seeing them, then it's the right side facing and if you turn it to the other side as you can tell you can't see the heads so that is your back side okay so with the front side facing you we are simply going to fold it in half like this and then we are working one single crochet through both layers in each stitch across and i'll show you wait 
just one second and I'll grab my yarn. Okay, so there we go. We have our working piece here. If you want, you can use stitch markers just throughout the piece to keep it folded together for an easy access, but I think this works really easily without two. So depending on what you like. So what I simply do is I have a slip knot on my hook. I go through the first stitch of the last round and the first stitch of the first chain stitch and then simply make a standing single crochet like that. And then I simply go into the next one making sure that I'm grabbing two stitches, two loops, I mean sorry, two loops from the chain row, okay? Because that will make it sturdier. And then I simply do a single crochet in each stitch through both layers across. Slow and steady wins the race here, so just take your time. One and two. And pull through. So you can just keep on going like this all the way to the other side. So do that and <laughs> meet me up over there and I'll show you how to finish this round because we're sewing these sides together. So don't cut off your thread, okay? Just keep on going. Oh, I did something very wrong there. <laughs> Just keep on going all the way across and yeah, have fun. Okay, so we are now at the last stitch and don't worry, it looks a little bit like there is a stitch missing but it's really not and if it is, just just fake it till you make it because this will not be seen. This we will hide with some decorations and stuff. So don't worry. There we go, everything can be fixed. Just a single crochet and then chain one just for the easy fastening off. And what I do is exactly with the other thread, I'm just making sure I have a long enough to sew the two ends together. That. Oh, it's so sunny now. I don't know if you can tell, but it's really, really sunny. Yeah, I have the sunshine right in my back. <laughs> and it's it's really lovely. It's autumn now, so I'm enjoying every bit of the sunshine I can get. So what we end up with now is a really, as you can tell, I'm struggling a little bit with this piece. There we go. Uh, a really long little wormy kind of thing. And what we will do is just simply take with the right side facing us, both ends together. That is all what we are going to do. We are going to bring them together side by side. And here is where your little needles come in handy. So we are simply going to help ourselves by securing them just slightly so they stay in place while we sew. So what we will do now as step two is to sew the white with the white and the orange with the orange, okay? So I'm gonna grab my needle and then just, I think I will begin with the orange side because that is the, the biggest size that needs to be sewn together. And what I do is simply a mattress stitch. I think it's called a mattress stitch. I'm just taking my needle, going through one of the sides here, tightening. Let's see if I can zoom in so you see better. There we go. And then I'm just splitting some ends, going into the next side, just back and forth, slow and steady. It's really my spoken words for this piece. Slow and steady wins the race, okay? So just take your time with it. I didn't think we need that one anymore. And then just This is not supposed to be played with, so it doesn't have to be like super, super sturdy um, and tight. You just, it's gonna hang on the wall. So just enough to keep it stitched together and that should be fine. So just go ahead and do this first with this one and just fastening off somewhere on the back side by going back and forth and then repeat with the other end and then do the same, but of course the white should Go with the white, okay? So attach your ends and meet me up for the next one. Maybe I should show you the white too because it's, um, 
<laughs> it's an invisible join that I'm using to join these sides, okay? So this is my working end. The starting end is placed to the back. And I'm just going through the head of the second stitch of the row and just making a fake little join here. Just like that. And then I'm going from side to side on the back, just as I did with the orange piece, hiding it in the same colored sections just to make sure it's not visible but that it still stays in place for where I want it. So easy peasy, lemon breezy, you can do this, okay? Keep on stitching and then we can continue on. So to make these cute little ears, all you need is the main body color and then later on after we have finished the ear I will also show you how to embroider these cute little inner ear details. They are super easy and super quick. So yeah, grab your main color and your hook and let's begin. So to begin we start with our main body color and just do a little magic circle. And then into it, we are making four single crochet, okay? So one, two, three, and four. This is kind of a split of yarn I have noticed. I don't know why. It, it wasn't for the blue color. Maybe it's just the scheme. So let's see. We just tighten it because now we are going to continue on with the ear working in the round. In the first stitch of the round, the first round that you made, you work a single crochet increase. So two single crochets into that stitch. And then you simply place a stitch mark into the first one just to keep track and make it a little bit easier on yourself, okay? So in the next stitch, we are doing a single crochet, just one. And then in the next we're doing an increase again, so two single crochets into that one. And then a single crochet in the last stitch. And this should give us a count of six single crochets, okay? So just move that on because we are going on with round number three. And in the first stitch we do a single crochet. And also in the next so a single crochet into the first two stitches. I'm gonna mark my first one as I always do. And then in the next stitch, we are doing a single crochet increase. So just, this is a little bit fiddly, especially with a size four hook, but it works. Just take it nice and slow and you'll be fine. So one single crochet in the next two stitches like that and then in the final stitch we do the increase and what I will do after I have done these two single crochets into the same stitch is that I'm actually going to fasten off the beginning end because now we are starting to make a tiny little tip of the ear and for that I need to have this gone because otherwise it will be really hard further along so go ahead and fasten this off, just sew it back and forth here a few times and meet me up for row number eight. Okay, I mean row number four, of course. <laughs> it has eight single crochet, sorry. <laughs> okay, so for round number four, we have fastened off the ends and we are simply going to place one single crochet in each stitch across. So eight single crochets just to move things along. One, two, three, oops, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. And now it really starts to look like a little point. So I'm just gonna grab some more yarn and then we are diving right into round number five. So for round number five, we are doing one single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochets in the next. 
and that will repeat all the way around so just put a stitch marker into that single crochet that you did the very first one and then in the next stitch make a single crochet followed by an increase so two single crochets in the next stitch sorry there we go one single crochet in the next two single crochets in the next one and one single crochet in the next and for the very last stitch you guessed it it's an increase <laughs> so we should have 12 single crochets after this round so just go ahead and double check it's so cute already and then we can begin with round number six so for round number six we are doing one single crochet in each stitch so it should be 12 single crochets okay one two three four five six seven eight I'm gonna redo that one. It's a splitty one. I don't know what's happening. Here we should go. Eight, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. It's such a gorgeous color so I, I forgive it for being this hard on me today. <laughs> so for round number seven we are just repeating round number six. So one single crochet in each stitch again. So twelve single crochets in total. Just go ahead and do that and meet me up for the next round. Well done! So we are already on to round number eight. It's the second to the last one. So now we're doing a final little increase. So I just work one single crochet in the next three stitches. Like that. Putting a little stitch marker into the first one just to make sure. And then we're doing an increase in the next stitch. So two single crochets into that one, like that. And then we are doing one single crochet in the next four stitches, okay? So one, two, three, and four. Grabbing some more yarn. And then we're doing a single crochet increase in the next stitch. So one and two into the same one. And then for the final stretch, one single crochet in the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. There we go. Okay, so for the final round, we should now have 14 single crochets. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yay! So now just do one single crochet in each of those, and then we are done with the E part. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, almost eleven. <laughs> there we go. Twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Great. There we go. Whew. And now, what you will do is of course cut off a long thread because we're doing some shaping to it we're going to place it like this and we are going to sew a few times on the back whilst uh, assembling it to the ring but for now just cut it off with yeah I just do it on a feel so yeah about that amount 30 centimeters or so I might exaggerate this a little bit but yeah I'd rather have too much yarn than too little so just Pull it out and grab your pink yarn and let's do the little embroidery, okay? Great. Okay, so now we are doing the inner ear part and it's really, really simple. All you need is 
a round tipped needle. So just snip off some yarn and then I'm, I'm, I took enough to do two ears but as I said I'd rather have too much yarn than too little especially since we want to do this relaxed and nicely. So first off all you have to do is fold your piece so that it lays with the bottom the last stitch to the back okay like that and then you simply take your needle somewhere in the middle I'm, I'm just looking and I feel like this is the middle so I'm just going through from the back to the front not through both layers just one layer and then I had a lot of yarn so I'm just pulling it to the front and then I'm just going up as far as I want my highest tip to be so I would like to have it maybe somewhere here so I'm just going through the head of one of the stitches and it's approximately one two three four stitches up so I'm just going in there and I'm not going through any layers I'm just going straight into the E and back out the same placement where I entered and just slightly and loosely pull it through don't grab the other yarn like that don't pull too tightly because then it will be all smushed. Just be relaxed with it. And you can fix this tension a little bit when we're fastening off with the starting end, okay? So no worries, just take it slowly. And then I go about three quarters up and one stitch or so to the right. I had to think, left or right? I'm going to the right. And I just do exactly the same. I'm just going down into the ear and then letting the thread run freely on the other side. So I'm not going through any other sections of the E, just down and back up. Oh, what happened here? These things always happen when one tries to film. I have done this a thousand times, but... <laughs> okay, and then I just repeat it for the other side. So you just go up and down approximately at the same place as you did initially and then you have like this little cutie tri trio of stitches so what I do to bring them all together is simply just going under just the yarn not the ear just the pink yarn to gather them all up so just go behind them and then back down again at the same place like that and go back out on the inner part of the ear. So don't listen as much as what I say, just do what I do, okay? <laughs> I hear myself trying to explain in English sometimes and it's, yeah, it's not my first language, so I'm doing my best. But it should look something like this. And then what I do is just, it looks so cute. I just cut it off here. Save the rest for the other ear. And then I simply, since no one is going to look inside here, we are going to stitch this onto our main body piece. I just do a little double, triple kind of knot. And then I let it be inside. So I'm just cutting it off somewhere. Like that. Easy peasy. And then when we attach it to the body, this will not be shown at all. This will all stay inside here. So like that and then we're going to do that and then we are sewing it onto the body. So it's gonna be so cute and I can see now maybe I should have gone a little bit higher just to really make it noticeable but that's a matter of choice and taste. So wherever you want to place it just do it like that and you'll be fine. So go ahead and do your second ear and meet me up for the next part. Okay? Have fun! So we have come to the fun part of doing the decorations. Now we are about to do the three little leaves here. And I have chosen to do two in the darker yellow and one accent one with the lighter yellow. So I got my yellow here to start with and I'm leaving quite a long starting tail, about 10 centimeters because we're going to use this to sew together the gaps that might occur. And I don't know if you saw the original Wally Corn tutorial, 
We are doing a leaf exactly as that one and I just love him. These leaves are so cute. So start off by chaining five, okay? One, two, three, four and five. And then in the second, uh, the second stitch from your hook, you are doing a slip stitch. In the next stitch, we are making a single crochet and a half double crochet. So now we are building some height, just like that. And then in the next one, we are making two half double crochets. Like that. And now into this final chain of the row, row <laughs> we are making several stitches. So first off, a half double crochet, okay? And now we are doing a single crochet because we are going to tip over to the other side. So we are doing another single crochet and then a half double crochet all into the same space. So four stitches in total. A half double crochets, two single crochets and a half double crochet coming around to the other side, okay? And then in the next stitch, we are doing two half double crochets. And in the next stitch, we are doing two more half double crochets. Like that. And then we're grabbing some more yarn and simply do a chain two picot. So we are chaining two and then working a slip stitch through the front loop of the previous stitch and through this underlying little bar that is the leg of it like that and then we're simply cutting the yarn leaving a long tail and I mean a long tail because you want to use this to sew it attached to our main piece later on so just slowly pull through the yarn because you don't want it to pull too tightly because then this will just become a knob okay a knot you don't want to pull this too tightly because then it will become more of a knot than <laughs> a little peak so that is what we will do and the next step is simply to take your little end, your beginning end, and as you can tell, it has become quite gappy. We have a huge hole there, we have one smaller there and the smallest one over there. This is easily fixed, okay? So what we will do is just simply take our needle and go under a few stitches here, make sure that they are not visible on the front side of your leaf and just tighten, okay? So just go around the first hole and or gap and go to the other side. So we're simply just stitching and pulling these stitches a little bit closer together. So this is just, you just go around them, fastening off the ends as you go at the same time. So win-win, <laughs> closing gaps and fastening off. There we go. Oh, this was a split yarn today. Yeah, so that's all we are going to do with this one. I'm just gonna cut it off. Just pulling on the thread, cutting very close to the work, leaving as little visibility as possible. And then with the other one, I simply just we're not going to fasten this off already because we are using this one later to attach it, as I said. But I'm doing the invisible join already. So skipping the first one, going through the head of the second stitch. Just slightly, don't pull too tightly. And just go back through the loop of that one and simply just kindly let it follow back down here and here you can experiment I forgot to say that you can experiment with your leaves if you want to do them with a bigger picot I mean you can do chain three or four even to get an even 
more tilt on it and you can just experiment with the heights a little bit. But make sure that you have your end somewhere close to the back now. And then, oops, sorry, I'm pulling my entire table and setup here. So have it close to the back and then repeat another dark yellow and then do the same for a light yellow too. Okay, so you should have three leaves when you're finished and then begin with the berries, okay? Done! We have three little leaves and we are now on to the berries and this is the last pieces that we are going to crochet for this one. So what I have done is I have taken three similar shades of this naturalized thinner kind of cotton yarn. This is must have by yarn and colors. You can use whatever you want in whatever colors you want. If you want to make them into blueberries or pastel berries, I don't know. Just have fun with it. And yeah, what you will need now, since we're doing it in a smaller kind of yarn, we are also using a smaller sized hook. So what I did was actually I made two of the berries in a three millimeter hook, and then I went down to a two and a half millimeter hook for one of them just to create it's the same pattern but by going down a hook sides it becomes a little bit smaller and a little bit tighter and it just looks a little bit more symmetric okay or asymmetric I don't know <laughs> it looks better <laughs> okay so I'm just going to show you one of these and then you can do them separately okay okay so to begin our little berries we are taking our thinner sized hook three millimeter this time maybe you do your two and a half first, I don't know. That's totally up to you. So what we are going to do now, into this magic circle, we are working eight double crochet two together, okay? So I do it with a raised stitch. You can also chain two or three to the height of a double crochet, whatever works for you. So I'm simply just raising a loop, going to the back, grabbing the yarn, pulling it behind and to the front and up. So I have two loops now on my hook and just go down and do my second double, half finished double crochet like that. And then I just pull through all stitches. And that I repeat now eight times. So simply just go ahead and do eight two double crochets. Let's see, there we go, together around in a circle <laughs> and you should be fine. This was a little bit trickier than I thought to show on camera but I think you can see what I'm doing. I'm just working up these little clusters and just placing them around the loop and it will it looks a little bit messy now but I promise you when we are finished it will look so good. Because then we are going to really get the shape that we want. So just go ahead and do this all the way around. I'm going to double check. I don't know how many I have done. I was so focused on watching what I was doing. Okay, so we'll see. We have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, great. And now we are on to the last one. So there we go. Ooh, no, I dropped it. Sorry. There we go. Eight double crochets, two together. And I'm actually going to do a chain one just to close. And then I'm pulling as always the thread back down to the back and just tightening it up. And then I'm making a slip stitch into the first stitch. But first I'm turning the right side out facing so it becomes almost like a little bow. You can do an invisible join or whatever works for you here too. But I think this is the simplest way to make sure that it stays together when I sew it on later on. So I'm just doing like that and like this. So there we have it, we have our main body, we have our two little cutie ears, three berries, three leaves and we are ready to start assembling. So in a few minutes all of this will be turned into, can I do this? Ooh, this! 
yay <laughs> i always wanted to do one of those <laughs> and don't mind that the rest of the bits are down here okay so we are going to start off by doing the attachment of the ears followed by the leaves and then the third the berries okay so grab your ears and main body and the needle and let's begin okay so to begin we are going to create a little bit of a fold of the ears because if you place them like that they are very very straight looking <laughs> so i think it's cuter if we just give them a little bit of another shape so what i do is i simply take my yarn and my needle and go through the entire piece back and forth a few times up the back of the ear still folded the entire time just back and forth and then work your way back down maybe two or three rows up okay depending on how much yarn you have saved here because you want to have a little bit left for attaching it to the body of course but just like that you have created a little bit of a v shape to it and it will be so cute we are as you can tell we have all the leaves to the right side on this version so i'm actually gonna position the joining space that we had a little bit more to the left as you can tell so i will place the ear over here and the other one over here so you can do as exactly as you want to but i think i have if i'm going to count one two three four five six seven seven eight ish stitches between the inner side of the ear here and the inner side of the ear here okay so just take the first ear and just slightly just as we did with the when we joined the sides just place three so it keeps in place when you are sewing it just helps a little bit with this part I'm no seamstress, I really am not, um, but this is how I do it. So I'm just taking my thread and then I'm going through some of the stitches in the main body and then up the ear part. And then I'm going down some stitches on the ear part and back through the main part. Oops, catch that one. And yeah, just simply, slowly, steadily going back up and down all the way around. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm very focused on this part um, because this is definitely not my strong suit. So when I come to the side, I simply go through the stitches on the side and back down. And just go up and down like this a few times and as I said this is supposed to hang on a wall it's not supposed to be a toy so it doesn't have to be like rock solid uh, crocheted on here sewn on here sorry <laughs> but it should be attached at least so the ears won't drop after half a year so yeah, just keep on doing this for this ear and then placing the other one with a few stitches apart, approximately eight, to the other side and meet me up to start with the leaves. Okay, to fastening off, you simply just go through a few stitches on the back, back and forth a few times, just as we do with our other work and then just cutting the yarn close to the ear, okay? One down, one to go. little ears they are so cute and now it's time to hide this little joining section so we are simply going to take our leaves and place them one by one I think I will have one there one pointing up like that and then 
the little one in a corner there and then I will attach the three berries there too and I will show you how to do them one by one so or not one by one but I will show you how to attach the berries and then <laughs> I will first show you how to attach the leaves and then the berries okay so what I want to do here the aim is to go through some of the stitches on the back side of the leaf and then some of the stitches on the front side of your fox because you want this back side to be neat and clean so just treat the top layer here and that will be fine okay so I just since I have already worked my first back and forth down here I will actually begin by sewing it onto here so I think that will be a good placement and then I just simply attach it like that and then I go back up and grabbing some of the stitches of the leaf. I'm trying to figure out how to best show you. But I'm just simply going, as you can tell, I'm just going, here you can tell the needle from the front that I don't want. So I'm doing it again, going through some stitches of the leaves. And then just going through some of the stitches. As you can tell, nothing on the back, only through the top layer. And I will then go back up a little bit and then back down a little bit on the body. Oops. Just making sure that it stays attached. I don't want the entire leaf sewn uh, attached. I want this little point to still be loose and partly placed like that because I want it to look a little bit unorganized, not too perfectly placed, you know. So I'm just gonna attach, I'm just gonna attach the, the back part of the leaf to the fox. And when you feel like, oh, this is good enough, this sits just the way I want it, just go back and forth a few times and then cut the yarn off, okay? So just as you would with any other crochet, just go back and forth a few times. And then cut your work quite close to the leaf. Like that. Okay, so just like that we have our three little leaves and now it's time for the berries now and I'm gonna start with this darker one. I'm gonna place it there. This is just a touch and go kind of thing. Where you feel like they should be placed, you place them, okay? So just as we did with the leaves, sew through the berry and then down into your work, making sure that it's secure there. And then to fastening off, you simply just do a few stitches through the berry. And that's it. Easy peasy. So this may be and look a little bit fiddly, but it's not that hard. It's just working a few stitches through the piece and then a few stitches through the berries and you'll be fine. It's just, and if they are noticeable on the backside, you know, no one looks ever at the backside. So don't worry, it will be fine like that. All good. Okay, so just like that, we have finished our little woolly fox. It's adorable. And if you want to play around adding more things, feel free to do so. Uh, for hanging, for this one, I simply used two of these, <laughs> two of these to the back and then right down into the wall. I'm just bending them a little bit so they go easier in. Or you can do as for the woolly corn, just take a little bit of tread 
tie into the back and hang behind. But we don't have a horn here, so it's harder to center. So do it behind the ears then, okay? Do a little one here and a little one here so you can hide it. And there we have it. Our second addition to the Wallicorn family is done. And we have our cute little fox joining the unicorn. Up next will be the bunny, but until then, please turn on the notifications, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, leave a little comment below and just enjoy these makes. Okay, take care and see you soon. Bye.